Okay. All right, guys, my name's Karen Batty, and thank you, Nancy. I don't know where she is. I think she's in her kitchen making quiche someplace, but thank you so much for virtual, uh, hosting a party, and I don't know what it's been doing near you, but it's been doing nothing but pouring rain up here, so it wouldn't have been much of a grilling show. However, with technology being the way it is, the show can go on. Um, all right, so I can see so far we've got Melissa, Maureen, and Christina, and I know Nancy's back there someplace. So you guys feel free to unmute at any point to ask questions because I don't want this to be a monologue. We want it to be kind of like a show, which in my mind is controlled chaos at best. So this is a grilling show, so I figured I'd start with some of the products that I've been using a lot for the grill. And when I say I, I mean my husband because he does most of the grilling. Um, one is this... Um, barbecue uh, grill pizza tray. Although now that we have the rock crock that is actually larger than this and can be used on the grill, that's what I've been doing my pizza on. But this I think is fabulous when you're just making some nachos or if you want to do a piece of um, fish on here or you want to just roast some vegetables, you can use it for that too. So um, it's pretty flexible. You don't just have to use it for pizza. Um, when you do this, when you do do pizza on the grill with this, you want to sprinkle the bottom with um, corn cornmeal. And they tell you to do that. They tell you not to spray it with any kind of oil. I didn't read the instructions the first time. I just pulled it out, sprayed it with oil, rolled the dough on, and oh my goodness, I, I it took days of soaking to get the pizza off of here. Once I followed the instructions and just put the cornmeal on and rolled the dough out, came out perfectly. No sticking, no nothing. All right, and does anybody have our roasting pan with grill, with the, um, the grill pan with the can tray holder? No, is that to make like beer can chicken? Yes, and it is fabulous. So I've got all our vegetables in here, so you can kind of see the, the size of this. It's quite large. In the center is this can holder, which is removable. So if you want to just pile it high with roasted vegetables or put your loaded nachos in here, you can do that. But then you can put the can holder back in, click it in place like so. It's just a twist to the left, a twist to the right. Put your, open up the beer can, put it in here, put the chicken on top. And I had a host the other day who said she had done um, beer can chicken before, never had this pan to do it in. She said, hands down, it came out much, much better on here because it held the chicken up. She could also put all kinds of vegetables in the base of this, and they got flavored with the, with, you know, the kind of drippings from the chicken. And she said, hands down, it was fabulous. And just one thing to lift the chicken and all her vegetables right off of the grill into the middle of the picnic table and have at it. So, um, you know, it's a nice big size if you're feeding a large group. And if you're not, you just put less on it. Okay, so that's that. And then we have a couple of grilling trays. This is the grilling basket, and this is the grilling tray. Okay. Now, they are both made in such a way that they will fit front to back on most standard grills, and the top will close. So you can fit two of these side by side on most standard grills. Now, what your preference is, is entirely up to you. You'll see the basket is a little deeper than the tray. My preference is the tray because I like all of the vegetables to get some of that charring on it from the heat below. Whereas if I do the basket, some of the vegetables you know, um, are on top of the others. So that, you know, the surface area to, to the heat is less. So that's why I prefer the tray. However, some people prefer the basket because they don't want their vegetables burned like I want mine. So um, anyway, those are the two trays that we've got. And then um, you guys said you wanted to see the, the silicone flexible lids. These are super cool. They come three to a set. This is the smallest one. They're all flexible. They're made out of silicone, which feels like rubber, but it's better than rubber. And if you own anything from Pamper Chef that is silicone, you know, you can stick it through the dishwasher a million times. It will never dry out and crack or anything like that. Is that a brownie pan I saw at the bottom? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how to, I can't tip it. You have to no, tip the ice. No there we go. Oh, look at that. So I scooped the chopped up stuff in the cups and then I poured the egg mixture on top and a little cheese and now it's going in the oven. Perfect. 
Hey, what scoop do you use for that? Is it the medium? Uh, I didn't use a scoop for the eggs, but I just used a little scoop for the veggies and stuff. Oh, small scoop for the veggies. Uh, but if you want to fill the brownie pan, I believe it's the medium scoop. Anyway, this um, lid, I'll go right up to the camera so you can see. It's, and excuse my nails, um, it's that shellac that pops off all at once. So you can tell I'm a righty. It all popped off last night as I was cleaning, so I apologize. Anyway, you can pop this out and then it's got a hole. So if you want to put this on a bowl and reheat something in the microwave, you've got a vent hole for it. But if you want it sealed tightly um, so that you can stick it in the fridge, you just pop this back through the hole and now you'll have an airtight fit. And then you just take whatever bowl you're using. Uh, I got this bowl over here. And it's got tabs on the side, so that makes it easy to kind of give it a tug and fix it, you know, over whatever bowl you've got. And it's got three different sizes. So no matter what size bowl you have, you know, you can find a nice snug fit. And then this can go right in the microwave. It can even go in the oven, but of course bamboo doesn't go in the oven. And of course it can go in, into the refrigerator as well. So if you've got one of our round stones, the old um, deep covered baker, and you want to cover it, you don't want to use tin foil, you can use that. We also have rectangle flat ones. Um, again, you know, if you make some brownies and you just want to leave them covered uh, on your kitchen counter, I ate brownies that were four days old that were covered with the silicone lid. It was amazing. And the family can lift it up, sneak out a brownie, and they just drop it, and it self-seals and covers right away. Unlike the saran wrap, which they lift up and then kind of just let drop, and then your brownies or whatever are in there are all stale. Or because it's silicone, if you're making lasagna, and it's in the oven, and it's, you don't want it to brown anymore, you can cover it with that flat silicone um, lid and put it right in the oven to cover your 9 by 13. Do you have a question? We were just talking about the the flat ones. I have a cat. Oh, okay. The cat gets into everything, and I was trying to decide if it would keep him out or not. <laughs> probably wouldn't. Um, probably wouldn't keep the kids out. But um, it does self seal, and it also because it lays flat, it's a good trivet too. So you can just plop it on any surface, and then you're gonna you can put your nine by thirteen baker right on there, not worrying about harming whatever is underneath. I actually do have a question about the round ones though. How are they, like, can you stack a bowl on top of each, like can you stack the things on top of each other with those lids on them or do they sink in or? Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's got more heft to it than saran wrap, but it's not a lid that you're gonna be stacking on. Okay. You know, so think of it as like a heavy duty saran wrap. Okay. Um, and that's really, you know, um, they say that we use enough saran wrap in this country to wrap the state of Texas twice. And so, and, and that's just in a year. Um, so, and uh, you know, it, it's kind of in the, you know, re, renew, reuse, recycle. So it decreases the need for saran wrap. Plus saran wrap should never go in the microwave. You guys all know that, right? Because when it heats up, it releases some kind of carcinogen, um, which silicone won't. So this is kind of, um, kind of replacing saran wrap. So, okay, so that's that. And um, you guys, I posted a little video about the burger press so that you can actually see this in action because I don't like to touch raw meat, especially if I'm going to be touching other things and doing a demo. But I, I wanted you to see at least the pieces and parts to this. So if you're doing burgers, you take this piece out, okay? And then you use this part of the handle. And I'm going to show you the handle up close. It's got a little dent in it, so that when you press the burger, you're gonna get a little dimple in it. The dimple makes the burgers cook flatter rather than turning into like little elliptical things like we often see um, happen on the grill. This side is flexible, it's the silicone. So after you press your burger in here, you can just pop it out like this and it pops right out, which is fantastic. Now, if you're making sliders, which are smaller, you pop this in, and you flip the handle around and use this side of the handle, which also has a dimple in it. Then when you go to um, store it, you just store all the three pieces together. All the pieces are dishwasher safe, so you can throw them right into the dishwasher. Could you guys see that? Just once I'm out of view of here, I can't see what you guys are seeing. I have a question, though. Sure. Yeah. Have you, have you used it before? Yes. 
Um, so, all right, so my question is, do you have to like spray it with anything so that the, the meat doesn't like stick to the inside of the container? You can, but I didn't bother because I thought to myself, I'm not gonna bother doing that. So when I tried it out, I didn't do that. And it didn't seem to make a difference. You could, as long as you popped it out, it, it really just came right out. Um, and I was also using, you know, as lean a beef as I could find. So it's not like I was using 80%, which would probably just coat itself in here. You know, I was using the 96 or 97%, whatever I could find. And it came right out, no problem. That was a good question. We were just talking about how our, both of our husbands like to use the 80% when they make this. <laughs> Exactly. And then they shrink up on the grill. So that dimple thing will really help that because you know when it shrinks then it turns into whoop. Yeah, so these they stay nice and flat with that dimple. I had never heard that before I thought it was gimmicky until I actually used the burger press and I thought oh my gosh, it's true now I It wigs me out to take hamburger and like press it into uh, You know hamburger meat and press it into the hamburgers having to do that just totally wigs me out so being able to just I take a bowl I mix all the stuff together with my mix and chop then I just take my large stainless steel scoop. I take a heaping scoop of that, plop it in here when I'm making a burger, and then just press, 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 and go plop. And now I don't have to like disinfect my hands to answer the phone or check email or whatever. I have barely even touched the stuff. So um, that's just me. I have a little germ phobia thing, raw meat thing. That and, and raw chicken. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, speaking of raw chicken, all right. Um, I recommend buying uh, the the organic chicken that has uh, you know free range that hasn't been fed all those you know or pumped full with steroids because when you buy just regular boneless breasted chicken, it's like this thick. Um, and then this is what's called the close and cut. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever seen when Pamper Chef came out with it. My coworker, um, I'm going to use it for um, tomatoes right now. My coworker uses it for her chicken. He loves for her it. Ch it yeah, exactly. That's what I love it for. Because again, um, just like I don't like to touch raw meat, I don't like to touch boneless breasted chicken that's raw. So I can take a piece of boneless breasted chicken, pick it up with a fork, put it in here. The edges stick out. I just kind of nudge it in with the fork. It's flexible. It's not cooked yet, right? Then I close it and it perfectly fillets it in half. This is spring activated at the top and at the bottom. So when you put something in here and close, it perfectly centers itself. Right now, I've got all these cherry tomatoes in here. Then you just wanna make sure that you've got a blade that's at least seven inches long because you want it to, to clear the entire close and cut. And then here are all the tomatoes and um, I'll show you. It centers itself so they're all perfectly like right down the middle, sliced. You can use it for cherry tomatoes and grapes, which to me, I thought was the biggest waste of time. If I want a cherry tomato or a grape, I just pick it up and I eat it, right? Um, but then they said I could use it for like a New York bagel or any kind of bagel. But they said if you take the big New York style bagel, put it in here, close it, cut in half. Then you can take half of that big New York bagel, put it in here, cut it in half so you can make your own bagel chips. Um, and so if you guys could see. It's spring activated here and here. It is all one piece construction. This doesn't come apart. So you can just throw the whole thing right in the dishwasher or you can rinse it off, not a problem. But when I do boneless breasted chicken, I just, as soon as the chicken's done, and again, I haven't touched the chicken. I pick it up with a fork, I slice it in half, I pick up the two pieces, I put it into you know wherever I'm roasting or cooking, whatever pan it's gonna be in. I haven't touched it. The fork goes right in the dishwasher and this follows immediately after. And I haven't touched it. So that's the close and cut. Um, something I thought I'd never use, but now I use it all the time. Have you ever used it on things like um, grapes or cherry tomatoes? Or yep, I just did a whole bunch of cherry tomatoes. Missed it. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Here, I've got a few more cherry tomatoes, so I'll sh I'll show you. Yeah, and you've got little ones, so yeah. you know it's a choking hazard to give them a cherry tomato or a grape. I'm trying to pick out the the ones I ha that had not fit here on the first round. Okay. Um, and some people just really don't like whole tomatoes in their salad. I couldn't care less, but okay. So I've loaded it up with the cherry tomatoes. I close it, and then. 
that up. And they're all done. So I'm have rolling you all over the place. And I did kind of pick it up to show you. It centers itself, so they're all nice and even. Have you have you done grapes? I'm just wondering. Yes. Yeah. Tend to be softer. Do they get smushed between those? No, as long as, as long as you have a good knife. And when this closes, because these are spring activated, it's not crushing whatever's under there. I mean, these cherry tomatoes aren't particularly hard. They're nice and fresh. So, um, but grapes, absolutely. I've done grapes a bunch of times in here. Um, we have grape cutting contests at my shows sometimes. A person with a knife at one side of the table, the other person with this. Now, this, you can buy this just by itself. If you already have at least a seven or eight inch knife in your home, you'll be good to go with whatever good knife you have. However, if you don't have a knife uh, that size at home, you can buy this as a set, and it comes with the green um, uh, Santuco knife or a green, I don't know, seven inch knife, whatever that is. That, um, so it comes with it. So you've got a knife that is appropriate for the size of this. Okay. All right. Maureen, when you had your party, I mean, Melissa, when you had your party, did you um, get the spiralizer? No, I didn't. I, I oh. got the prop. Oh, the rock rock. Okay. Good choice. This is the spiralizer from Pamper Chef. And I got to tell you, since I got it, I have not stopped spiralizing things. I am just be out of my mind. Like, and I, I, half the time that I'm using it, because I just can't even believe it. So the good news, Karen, yes. is that I have the spiralizer and I have a butternut squash on hand. Oh, you have the paper. Oh, good. So you can show how easily it works for butternut squash. We can do it. All right. I'm going to start with an onion. Right now, it has just the blade in it that comes in it. It never comes out. It's the one flat blade, and it's called the ribbon blade. It's just going to cut one way and one way only. This will come out in pieces because it's an onion, and God made it with, with layers. So those layers are already built in. So I'll use this when I'm doing this blade when I'm doing an onion or when I'm doing like a, a cucumber and I want it to be spiral or a potato because I want to make curly fries. So here's what this does. And it is super easy. I, I am not really working hard at all. I don't know if you guys can see this. Can you guys see this? There's all of that onion. Now, um, it's so quick and so easy, you don't have time to fry. I'm going to take my 9 by 13 baker because I'm going to be cooking these things a little bit later. Definitely not going to throw it all away. So there's um, our whole entire onion in no time. Okay, so that's the ribbon blade. Um, you're always going to end up with a little bit left over. And that's because you have these little spiky things that hold the, the uh, vegetable in place. And they don't want us mistakenly... Um, grinding up those little spikes so it stops automatically before you get there. Now, you have this one attachment and it can be used um, either up or down. So here's the attachment that comes with it. I don't know if you guys can see this, but these, are, these little tines, they're about the width of linguine. So this is called the linguine blade. When I flip it this way, it almost looks like a hair comb. And that's called the, um, the angel hair uh, blade or the spaghetti blade. Okay. So whatever one you want to use, you want that one facing up. Now, one tip, because I didn't read the instructions. I read instructions on a need-to-know basis. I usually mess something up first, and I go, why did that happen? Then I read the instructions, and I go, oh. You want to click this finger guard in place before you put this blade in because it's going to guide it exactly where it should be. You're not going to tip it up or tip it down. And then it's just a righty tighty lefty loosey thing so you don't have to worry about, you know, having any kind of fancy tools around. Okay, and now I'm going to do our potato. I'm just going to take one little snip off the top and the bottom so I have two flat surfaces, one that can grab those blades on the bottom and one that um, can that the uh, things can grab on in the top. Oh, now that I'm standing over the onion, I'm crying. <laughs> All right. Now, if you have little ones in the kitchen, you just set this up for them, and with very little help, they can do this. 
And a great way to get kids to eat healthy is to get, um, get them, you know, helping you with the preparation of the food. Kids will eat what they help prepare. And it's that quick, that easy. There's my entire potato. And I'm telling you, I never tire. Every time I use this, I'm just smiling from ear to ear because I don't even know how I would do this otherwise, and it certainly wouldn't be this quick or easy. I use it for beets. Butternut squash, zucchini, summer squash, you name it, I spiralize it. And what's nice is the potato and the uh, butternut squash, they cook up so quickly. Um, normally, cubing up a, a, a butternut squash, by the time I'm done, my hands are aching, and it takes about 40 minutes in the oven. Oh, and then, Nancy, were you going to show us that? Oh, good. I'm going to say time out because Christina is trying to assemble mine. <laughs> And is having an issue. <laughs> oh, bring it on over and I'll see what I can help with. Hold it up. I figured it out. You have to turn this thing because I didn't read the instructions. I was about to oh, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Yeah, you gotta turn this thing to hold the blade in place. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now we're good. Now. now we're good. Stay on. Now you're cooking. All right. So there's I'm gonna throw the potatoes in with the onion. And I'm going to also do a, um, a squash with mine. And when you're ready with that butternut squash, let me know. I'm just using up time, spiralizing things on my end. It's a butternut squash. Okay, I'll get it. Now, with a zucchini, just cut it in half. Not a big deal. Karen, she said, do you have to peel a butternut squash? What's that? Do you have to peel the butternut squash? Uh, yes, but not squash. Anything that you don't want to eat the skin of, you should peel. And you guys who are at Nancy's house right now, you should really try that spiralizer. It is amazing. It twirls so easily. And I've had people say who come to shows and they own other spiralizers. And they say, oh, yeah, mine works for, like, squash, but it really doesn't work for a potato or it doesn't really work for, you know, butternut squash because it's too hard. And then um, they're amazed at how it just goes through a potato. This one goes through a potato or butternut squash like butter. I mean, I'm telling you, it's practically effortless. You can get a three-year-old to, to spiralize butternut squash or potato with this thing. Because once it's started, it like grabs on and then it just, I don't know, momentum carries it. I have no idea. It's just fun. So I have a question. And um, if you're working on cutting down on your carbs, this is great. You can spiralize um, a couple of zucchini, put, in it, put it in your rock crock. No oil, no water, no nothing. Just cover it six minutes on high, or maybe seven or eight, depending on your microwave, six minutes in mine. And it comes out steaming, twirls on your fork like pasta. And then you can use it any way you want. You can um, put a pasta sauce on it, like a red sauce. You can make an Alfredo sauce if you want. Or you can make a pesto to top it off. You know, whatever you would normally do. So if, you, um, if you're watching your carbs, well, that's my question. What kind of, like, I get it. I get the spiralizer and what it does, mm -hmm. but I don't know what I would use it for. Like, what type of food you would make with it besides? Well, I just did an onion, a zucchini, and a potato that I'm just going to roast in the oven like this. Okay. Um, so, we have a couple of different recipes, and um, they're actually on my What's Cooking with Karen page. Um, a whole thing of what you can do with your spiralizer. So you can make like a stir fry that's a whole bunch of different vegetables. They all tend to cook together and blend together. You can make it really comfortable with beets and butternut squash and zucchini or summer squash. I mean, you can pretty much play with it. You can do carrots and cucumbers. Um, if you want to do a curly fry, you can just put the ribbon blade in and do a curly fry with a potato or sweet potato. Uh, but mostly I'm roasting a bunch of vegetables or I'm swapping out a vegetable that is spiralized for pasta. So you, you, you can um, so what have you got in here? substitute zucchini um, for, for pasta any time that you were yeah. cooking that pasta. Let's do, let's do the, um, the linguine blade, I guess, for the butternut. For that? Yep, sure. Actually, you could use either one. Oh, and my, my other cat is outside in the rain. I'm going to go let him in. Do you see? 
So I've never even bought a butternut squash before. So this is definitely a first. Oh, I made it too big. Hold on. <laughs> I gotta put it shorter. It won't fit. <laughs> is this your first time using it? Yep. Yes. So oh, exciting. I think you have to press down a Push little. Push down. Yep, just press down. Now start cranking. Okay. Keep just go. Is there anything? Yeah. Right well, I think you gotta give it you a little push. Started, but it doesn't look like it's full. There we go. Uh, I wasn't pushing down while I was turning. All right, somebody else try. Oh. It's Nancy's. Let Nancy try. Oh, <laughs> Let's take over. Yeah, so you probably have to push down a little. Otherwise, yeah. it's not gonna. Yeah, it's also a little bit of pressure while you're turning. Yeah, but that's what I didn't do is I didn't put a little pressure on it, but once I did it, it was so anytime I'm doing butternut squash, if I used to cube it up to roast it, now I spiralize it. It's quicker and easier than cubing it, and it cooks faster than cubing it. There we go. It's coming. Yeah, I think I get it. Now that is raw butternut squash. Is that easier to turn than you ever imagined it would be? Yeah, that, yeah, really especially because raw butternut squash is a bear to cut. Through. Well, I was even having yeah. trouble peeling it. Yeah, it's like cool. Oh, so wait a minute now. Now we, can we switch the blade half in the middle? Of our um, you have to take the food off to switch the blade. No, no, no. You gotta loosen it up. Yeah, pretty okay. tidy, lefty, loosey. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording.